Hey everybody, later this week I get back in the greenhouse. Week after that we have plants arriving, so there is lots to be excited about. Almost makes recording down here in the basement uh, bearable. Uh, fortunately, I have something I really want to tell you about, and that is petunias. And not your run-of-the-mill petunias. I am talking about those beanbag size clouds of color that some people just have a gift at growing. Now, I will say that we've had pretty good luck with petunias at Netta's, but a couple years ago, my sister Stacy and I kind of said, let's really try to up our petunia game. Let's see what it really takes to take those petunias to the next level. And we had great results, and we found out it's a lot easier than we expected. We thought it was going to be very technical, or we thought we were going to have to do all these really specific special things. We found that as long as we made some really good decisions on the front end, and then followed a pretty reasonable schedule afterwards that the results were just incredible, like beyond what we would have ever expected. So I'm going to tell you exactly what we learned through that process, and uh, hopefully uh, I'll get some petunia converts out there and we'll all be able to share our beautiful petunias uh, that last all the way through the end of the season. So first thing I'm going to do is talk about that schedule that you need to keep. And I do that because that's the commitment that you're going to be making. So if you hear the, the kind of schedule that I tell you and you go, oh, that's sounds like a lot of work, hey, you are probably not a candidate for like best petunia on the block. Uh, but that doesn't mean that you can't try it out. Uh, even if you don't stick to the schedule, you're going to find that you're going to still have pretty good petunias. You're just not going to have those overwhelmingly large gargantuan uh, petunias out there. So it's important to know that generally petunias like consistent water. So what that means for us can kind of vary throughout the season because we're pretty far north. We have a very short season. Our weather at the end of May can be very, very different from the weather, say, you know, in the middle of July, and then also different from that weather that we have at the end of September. So for us, it means we want to pay attention to our watering, especially at the beginning of the season where we don't want to overwater. And the best way to check to see if these plants need water is right here with our hand. Usually at the beginning of the season, the soil is kind of nice and loose, so it's really easy to just kind of slide your finger in. I usually try to go to at least the second knuckle, and then if it feels pretty damp, don't add water. If it feels dry, add that water. And that's really a good way just to kind of get in the habit of doing that, especially early on. As we start getting warmer, uh, I'll also start lifting like a hanging basket or a porch pot just to kind of get a feel for what it feels like when that pot is full of water and heavy and when it's dry and very light, because that's going to be important as we start getting into the warmer months to help us kind of determine. Now, granted, if you have like really big pots or heavy pots, you're not going to be able to do that. You're going to have to gauge it either by, you know, the touch method or you kind of start getting a feel for knowing your petunias and getting a sense of when they need water and when they don't. Uh, and also you're kind of gauging that based on the other plants in the yard. But generally, we just want to make sure that they're getting that consistent water. Uh, they can handle some amount of drought, but they can't handle, you know, two or three days with no water uh, in the heat of summer. They're not going to make it. Uh, so that's just important things to note. Uh, when we water, remember we are watering the soil. Uh, if you're watering from the top and you're, you know, getting on the leaves and the flowers, a lot of times that's going to shed the water away from the plant. So that doesn't always work for us. We also notice that like water droplets on the leaves sometimes will turn the leaves a little bit like have black or brown spots which are kind of unattractive. Now it doesn't happen that much as we get into the warmer months but especially in the uh, beginning of the season especially in the greenhouse where we have higher humidity and less airflow we'll really see that effect on those leaves and it's just not very attractive. So we always say just try to water the soil. If you have something where you can actually get underneath the leaves and water directly onto the soil that's the best way but there's going to be times when you're going to just have to water from the top and that's just how it goes. Uh, but we do find that we get better results if we're watering that, you know, right, right down at the bottom at the soil level. We found that watering in the morning is best. That way the plant kind of has all the water it needs to get through the day. And then on those really warm days or on those really windy days, we go back and check. And a lot of times they, they can really benefit from a little bit of water in the afternoon. Again, we don't water late in the night because we just found that our petunias don't like to go to bed really soaking wet. I mean, in the heat of summer, it's not that big a deal, but at other times of the year, they just kind of Ooh, you know, don't do so great. And when we water, we want to make sure we're getting just enough moisture in there that the soil absorbs as much as it can. If you're constantly watering it and it's dripping out the bottom, that's too much water. Number one, you're wasting the water. Number two, you might be just kind of washing away all, a lot of the nutrients that are in the soil. And if you do that over a long period of time, you can end up kind of drowning your roots and that can really damage the roots. And they, you know, they're not, the flower's not going to do that well. A lot of times it can even kill it. So uh, important that you're not overwatering. You want to just 
get enough water in there that you know it, the plant is happy but it like again if it's all dripping out the bottom that's just too much water you're not doing your plant any favors once we get to the end of the season you're going to probably start winding back some of your watering again uh, because our days are getting shorter our nights are cooler our days are even cooler and so we're going to have less evaporation and so therefore we're not going to need quite as much water so again you're going to just be paying attention to how much moisture is in that soil uh, if it's already wet probably doesn't need any more but as it dries out you're going to make sure that you're giving it the water that it needs now putting your petunias on a drip irrigation system can be a way to kind of get that consistent water every single day where you just turn it on for a couple minutes in the morning, you know, sometimes 15 minutes, 20 minutes. You're going to have to figure out what works for you and you're going to have to figure out how you have to adjust it uh, based on the conditions. And then there might be those days when you come home from work and you have to just flip it on for a couple minutes uh, just because you know that those plants are dry. So not too big a deal. Uh, Putting in those drip irrigation systems can be a pretty easy do-it-yourself project. There's a little bit of a learning curve, but most people figure it out. Uh, and you can always start on a small scale and then increase you know, throughout the years uh, as you feel more comfortable with it. Probably one of the most important aspects of getting those giant, giant petunia baskets is going to be fertilizing. And so it's critical that you're giving them a regular schedule of fertilizer. And we recommend a water-soluble fertilizer that's especially for for blooming plants and so the most common ones are like a miracle grow proven winners makes one i think there's one called jacks there's beat your neighbor fertilizer and those kind of usually are the ones that are kind of like the blue or the green kind of crystal kind you just add them to your watering can and they turn your water a different color there's some liquid ones as well and you're going to just basically instead of watering like you normally do that day you're going to water with the fertilizer water so it's just kind of a watering with special water that day. Uh, if you have drip irrigation, uh, you can turn off the drip that day and then that's the day that you do it all by you know, your watering can. So petunias can handle that extra fertilizer, but I wouldn't recommend that you do this with every single plant in your yard. So there's some annuals that you really don't want to give that much fertilizer to, and then definitely not your perennials and not your flowering shrubs. Using that liquid fertilizer every week on those, that's just too much fertilizer for them. They're not built for that. They don't even want that. So you're just going to be wasting your fertilizer and you could even be damaging the plants. So this is for your uh, petunias. And there are a couple other annuals, like, you know, a lot of times people will have like calabrocoas in with their petunias. They're going to be just fine. Usually verbena is fine uh, uh, with that extra fertilizer as well. Now, one thing about calabrocoas, a lot of people think a calabrocoa is just a mini petunia, and that is not true. They are very different plants, and they have two distinct differences that you really need to know about uh, so that you're, because if you're thinking that they're just like petunias, uh, you're going to end up not having great plants. Number one, they are sensitive to soil pH. This is the calabrocoas. Uh, so we generally don't plant those in the ground. We usually put them in pots or containers because the pH of the soil uh, is controlled in there. Whereas in your yard, if you plant them in the ground, they just might not do as well. And then the other thing is that they don't like having like wet feet. The calabrocoas like to dry down and then get a lot of water and then dry down and get a lot of water. If they're really wet all the time a lot of times they start to rot either the leaves on the bottom or just at the root level or they just don't look as well they don't flower as well if they're getting too much water petunias on their other hand are a little more i guess uh relaxed about that they can handle you know kind of different watering conditions they don't uh, pout as much as calabrocoas do i just want to make the difference between petunias and calabrocoas uh, because some people think there is none and it's important that you know that after putting all this work into the petunias, you also want to protect them from pests. And your big pests around our area are going to be the earwigs. Uh, and those are bugs that you generally don't see. They come out at night and they usually climb up and they eat the flowers out and they really do a lot of damage to your plants. Uh, fortunately, they're pretty easy to keep under control. So if you get Sluggle Plus or Captain Jack's a bug and slug killer. Uh, just look at the, the labels on each one of those and make sure that it says earwigs on it. Uh, those usually take care of them. The important thing with these is that a little bit goes a long way. So we usually say take two or three pellets, put it on one side of the pot, take two or three pellets, put it on the other side of the pot, and that's all you need. And then you just go back a day or two later, and if it's still there, you leave it. If it's gone, that means you need to add more because those uh, earwigs or slugs or whatever are, are eating it. So you want to add more. I've seen people online sprinkle sluggle really liberally into their containers and not only is it a big waste of the, the sluggo, but also one thing you'll notice is that over time, usually after a week or two weeks, it starts to mold. And it now it is an organic product, so it's not doing any damage. It's not a problem for that mold to be there, but it is un unattractive and there's just no reason to have all that. It's best to go and you know add your couple granules, keep an eye on it. If the granules disappear, add more and then you're just using the amount that you need and you're not you know 
overdoing it with, with the sluggo and wasting it. And the last bit of advice is that your petunias can benefit from a little bit of a trim. So we always call it a little haircut, like after the 4th of July, going in and just kind of cutting off, uh, usually we say about 20% or so of the plant. Uh, the other way to look at it is look at kind of where it kind of goes over the edge of the pot and then go down a couple inches and then just cut around there. Uh, petunias can recover from a, a quite a bit of trimming, uh, but you don't want to go so harsh uh, that it just takes forever for it to kind of come back. But by giving them that trim, it's going to rejuvenate the plant. And it's going to encourage kind of some new growth or some new flowering and it's just a good thing to do. You can do it uh, end of 4th of July and then if you need to do it later on in the season you can uh, but you oftentimes don't have to. Uh, it's kind of one of those things you just kind of keep an eye on it. If you notice any stragglers or any kind of leggy bits you can always trim those back and a lot of times you'll see a lot of improvement if you do that. So now that you understand the season of care I'm going to tell you about some of the decisions you can make before you even plant your petunias that are going to have a big impact on things. So one really has to do with the variety. So a lot of the old varieties, a lot of times we call them seed varieties, uh, we call them that because number one, they're started from seed and their whole goal is usually to produce flowers and then produce seed and then they kind of just wind down after that. And so they can be beautiful plants. You may have even bought them before where you, know, you bought a nice you know, nine inch hanging basket uh, after the 4th of July, or maybe you bought the little four pack or six pack or something like that. And they were really starting to grow and they looked really good. And you thought, gosh, two weeks or three weeks, these are going to just be beautiful. And they looked good for two weeks, even three weeks, but then they just kind of weren't producing many flowers. They kind of didn't grow anymore and kind of you were disappointed in them. Well, that probably was a seed variety and those varieties do tend to kind of do their thing and then they're done. You can trick them by deadheading. Uh, and by deadheading, it's not just plucking off the flowers. Uh, it's before the flower goes to seed, you actually pluck off the little bit of uh, bud, the green bud that attaches to the flower and you pop that off. And that can extend the life of those, but that is a lot of work. The newer varieties are bred with these really incredible characteristics. So they have that really large vigor. They're Flower coverage is really dense and they flower right to the end of the season. Somehow we've managed to trick them uh, out of kind of focusing on producing seed and they just want to flower all the time. Uh, so these varieties, uh, most of them are propagated by vegetative cuttings. So that means like a grower will have a mother plant and then they kind of cut pieces off, vegetative cuttings, and then they propagate from those cuttings. And when done properly, they end up with basically a something that's genetically identical to the mother plant and it has all those incredible characteristics and that's how we get those incredible plants. Now I will admit that the vegetative cutting process is more expensive than the seed process so sometimes you're going to pay more for those petunias that have all those really amazing characteristics and that are done through the vegetative cuttings. So that's one of the downfalls but definitely worth it because number one those plants are going to bloom more also, they tend to be so vigorous and so covered with flowers that you need fewer plants than if you were to use kind of some of those older varieties. One of the other characteristics that is bred into these kind of new varieties is that they have a little bit thicker or stronger petals. And if you have seen some of the old varieties, you may have noticed like when they get rained on or when they get watered, the petals a lot of times get kind of pushed down onto the leaves and they just kind of flop onto there. Then they kind of turn brown and slimy, kind of unattractive. And that's just been kind of something that petunias were known for. Well, the new varieties, the petals are a lot stronger. So quite often they can just handle the rain no problem. They don't even, you know, bow down to it. Or if they do, they bounce right back up. And that's a really great characteristic because not only does it mean that the water doesn't damage your petunias, it also means that when the flower is done and it dries up, it's actually a little bit heavier. And when it's heavier like that, it just kind of gets blown off in the wind or gets tickled off uh, when if you kind of tickle it a little bit. And so there's no deadheading on those plants. And you know, the flowers just kind of disappear. And so the self-cleaning feature on the new varieties is so incredible because you get so many flowers and they're just so low maintenance. You can go ahead and, you know, deadhead your petunias if you want, but these new varieties, there's really no need to. And it just saves you so much time and so much energy. The other interesting thing about these new varieties is that because they're not focused on producing seed, they will just kind of keep producing flowers as long as they're getting fertilizer. So if you keep fertilizing them, they will just keep going and going and going. So when other annuals are starting to notice the signs that the seasons are starting to change, you know, the days are getting shorter, nights are getting colder, a lot of other annuals, they're just going to start kind of looking a little sluggish and, you know, 
getting a little lap flowering, not flowering very much, just not really doing much. Petunias aren't like that at all. As long as they're getting more fertilizer, they just think they need to keep going. And the great thing about petunias is that they can hold up down to like 26 degrees. So as long as we've kind of been seeing that gradual temperature uh, drop through the season, they just kind of are able to adjust as the temperature goes down. And we can oftentimes have petunias even into November, definitely into October. Uh, it just kind of depends on you know when that really cold snap shows up. But petunias are incredible that way. So you could have petunias a lot longer than you can have other annuals. With these new varieties, with all these incredible characteristics, uh, there are some that are bred to be especially large. So the most popular one or most famous one is the Supertunia Vista. Now remember the name Vista because there's also regular Supertunias. The Vistas are the giant ones. These get really, really large and they're just, you know, the ones that kind of drape over and just keep going and going and going. Also in that same kind of size category are like the wave petunias and also the color rush. And there probably are some other ones out there as well, but those are the most common. Then there's kind of the next size down and these are still enormous. So you will not be disappointed with these. In fact, sometimes these get to about the same size of the Supertunia Vistas and, and the waves and whatnot. And that would be the regular Supertunias. There's the Cascadias, the Flower Showers, Fun House, Easy Wave, Sanguna, and the Super Cows, which are actually a Petunia Calibrago hybrid, but they look mostly like a Petunia, so we raise them just like Petunias. Then there's those specialty varieties like the Bee's Knees Petunia and the Hippie Chick. Those get really large as well. So if you go with any of those varieties, as well as some other ones out there, you're going to be in good shape. Now, if you go to kind of a big box store and you just go and see a plant and it just says Petunia and there's really no branding to it, you can look at the size and if you get a petunia that's like 18 to 24 or 24 to 36 inches those are going to fill out really nice and get very very large if you get those that are going to be less than that uh, don't expect the kind of vigor that you're going to get from these other varieties so that's one of the advantages if you want really big plants you it's usually a good idea to know what variety you're getting instead of just buying general petunias. And there are also some varieties of petunias that are bred not to get very big. So we have a series called Capella, another one called Patunia. Uh, those just kind of stay more kind of like a nice mounded size and they don't get that big trailing feature. Those will never get to the size that you're, you're talking about when you want those really big ones. If you need a smaller petunia though, those are really good ones to get. The other factor that contributes to these really large petunias is going to be the container size. And if you've seen some of these plants out there, you probably have noticed that their containers are a decent size. So the bigger you can get, the more room they're going to have to grow and the better they're going to do. A lot of times I've seen people, you know, they have a 10 inch pot and they try to put three Supertunia Vistas in them and they're not gonna have the success because those three plants are gonna be competing. If you're going with a small pot, just put one of them in and it's actually gonna get bigger than probably the three because they're not gonna be competing the same way. So if you can get, you know, a 14 inch hanging basket or bigger, or if you can get like, you know, a container that's 16, 18, 20, 22 inches, uh, those are gonna really put on a show and they're gonna give those plants that extra room uh, underneath the ground because they need to have that space for the roots under the ground to grow so that they can push up the growth above ground. So if you want really large above, you got to think about having the extra room below as well. So I've given you lots of tips. Hopefully you can apply them and have incredible results. I'd love to see some of your uh, petunias. So if you have photos, do send them to netasonline at gmail.com. I'd love to see them. I'm always interested to see how people's plants are doing. Uh, I'm also just looking forward to getting some of ours planted and then sharing those either through video, Facebook, Instagram, uh, and just showing off a little bit. Hopefully we have really good results. Uh, and if we have some failures, we'll share those too. But uh, I think we're going to have really good luck with our petunias this year because we've got some varieties I'm really excited about. I can't wait till they arrive. So, hey, you guys have a really great week and I'll be talking to you very soon.